Hey, let's get our salad started. Um, people ask me all the time what I use for my dressing. So I'm going to show you how I do my dressing. Usually I just do it off camera because it takes a little time. But I'll show you today how I do my dressing. So today is going to be making my salad and the dressing. So here we go. <clears throat> this is a combination of all my vinegars. It's an even amount. It is red wine vinegar, white wine vinegar, rice vinegar, white vinegar, balsamic vinegar, and apple cider vinegar. So all six vinegars, I just do the same amount as of each of them, and I keep it in this jar in my refrigerator. So whenever I want those vinegars in something, I can do it. So that so that's what that is, just, just vinegars, a, big, a mixture of all my vinegars. This is G. Hughes Polynesian, and this is G. Hughes Mustard. And I'm just putting it in this jar, so just to give me a reference, it looks like I'm gonna, that looks like it's about a third of the way, and that'll be a third of the way. No, that'll be a, hang on, I'm trying to see how many. So if this is 800, so two, four, yeah, six, eight. Okay, so I'm gonna do 200, 400, and then the rest will be vinegar. So I do 200, I'll do 200 of Polynesian. Let me hold my finger there so I remember where it's at. Because I used to water these down with water. But one of you all had mentioned, well, why don't you use vinegar? And at first I was like, I don't know. That sounds weird. But then I'm like, well, I put on the vinegar from my pickles. So then I'm like, well, duh. So that's what I've been doing. So it is half G. Hughes sauces and half vinegar. So you see I did a fourth one fourth with one, one fourth with the other, and now I'm gonna to top it off with this blend of vinegars. Okay, so now I can put the lid on it. Shake it up. <clears throat> so this way, this is why whenever you see me plug in my salads, I half of it, if I do 60 grams, only 30 grams is my salad dressing. And, or, you know, the GU stuff, whereas 30 grams is vinegar. So that's what you see me plug in to my chronometer or right down on my dealie up there. So that is my salad dressing, and that's how come it's all watery. Okay, next up we're going to cut our jicama. Um, it's like we always say, jicama is hard to peel but easy to cut. Rutabaga is hard to, to cut but easy to peel. So they're kind of the opposite of each other. Um, I already cut up a jicama a while ago for something else, and my jicamas are not, they're not fresh. Um... You just don't know when you get a jicama. See, like it's got that brown on it. It's still edible, don't get me wrong. I'll still eat it, I don't care. But um, it's just not that fresh, pure. When you cut into it and you see that it's real super white, like an inside of an apple, that's when you know you got a good jicama. But if you cut into it and you see some kind of brownish, yellowish chunks, it's not the best jicama. It's not the freshest jicama. It ain't going to kill you, because I eat those all the time. But that's good to have on a salad or something, you know, when you're going to have flavor, other things on it. It's not something you want to use and just put tahini on, because it's just not going to taste as fresh. So I'm going to finish cutting this up, and then I'll, I'll be back, and we'll see how much of the actual jicama we have left after we get rid of the, the yucky brown stuff. Okay, see that? That's what I'm talking about. See how that's brown? It's not good. I mean, it's not going to kill me, but I am cutting quite a bit of that off. Because I don't want that extra. I don't like that brown in it. It's a very earthy flavor. When jicama's fresh, it's just a very light, um, kind of a sweet flavor. But when it gets to the brown stage, it's more um, earthy flavor. All right, now we're going to cut it up because we're going to cube it up. Now, listen. 
I could take this back to Walmart and get my money back, I'm quite sure, but I eat it because, it, like I said, it's not, it's not, it doesn't taste bad, it's just not, it doesn't taste good and fresh, so, I'm, I've already got this dirty from whenever I used my chopper earlier on the, so on jicama, so I'm just going to go on and cube these up. Something that this one would be good for is cooking. So if you wanted to make some hicka salad, or if you wanted to make some baked hicka bean, or if you wanted to make some chili, you could make some chili and um, and use your hickama in your chili, which man, that sounds kind of good. But that's another day. It's another day, Terry, it's another day. Anyway, so I'm gonna finish chopping these up. Now, yeah, it's just earthy. So, <clears throat> I put these in a container and uh, we'll have them throughout the week. Okay, now it's time to cut up my rutabaga. Now, this is where I was saying a while ago. Rutabaga is easier to peel and jicama, but harder to, to cut. So, I only cutting the ends off to give me a base if you are not able to get the ends to cut off that's all right you don't have to do this part you can definitely do the easy part just give me just a second here i want to get this off because i like having a base on each side that's just kind of my preference so now this is the easy part and this is where i was saying you got to get a place to start but for the hick of rutabaga i can just run this this uh peeler all the way around and it peels just fine so that's all I do for a rutabaga to peel it except I've got it on this so it's kind of twisting up hang on Now we can do better. It's not going to move the bottom piece. So, yeah, that's all I do. Around and around and around I go. Where I stop, nobody knows. So I'm going to just keep doing this. And I'll holler whenever it's done. And we will get it, get ready, uh, cut up for our salads. So this next step is the part that makes a rutabaga hard to cut. Rutabaga is a very dense and so, so I, in the past, I've used my regular knife and I hit it with a hammer. But thankfully, Gloria sent me this cleaver. She was like, mm, girl, you need to do it the right way. So I've got, she sent me this cleaver. And when I talk, it, it won't be able to hear me when I hit it. So I'm going to quit talking and you can just watch this next couple things. And actually, I'm not the only one that uses a cleaver. Uh, Brenda Gant, if you watch her channel, she has to use a cleaver for hers also. Except she just takes a whack at it. And I don't want to do that because I don't want it to go flying around. I do not have a butcher block. She has an actual butcher block, and I do not. So, you know, my poor cabinets, I've done a lot to them. But, um, yeah. So let me wash this off, and I'll get it put away, and we'll get on to the next step. So next up, what I'm going to do is cut up my rutabaga so we can put it in my electric chopper. That electric chopper has saved me so much time and energy and helps my eyes when I'm chopping up onions. I actually am going to be using that for onions in another video. So, um, but it, it's really, really awesome. It, uh, it just chops it up. You can either chop it up really fine or kind of big. But, um, but so for my rutabaga, I like it in kind of chopped up pieces for my salad. And, um, and this is a heck of a lot easier than using my, uh, the thing that cubed up my jicama. This is just a lot, not easier. And it's really cool. You only have a couple things to clean. You don't have a big, a big mess. So 
I have, do have a uh, Amazon uh, storefront, and this particular brand is not in there, but I have another one linked that's quite similar. And I've watched videos where they actually, like they make salsa in there. So see how that's chopped up? Now, if I were going to make um, my baffles, my rutabaga waffle um, bread, then I would want it more fine than that. But I don't. This is just for salad, so it doesn't have to be super fine or anything. So I'm going to cut up the other part and chop them up, and I will be back. Okay, so next up is our peppers. So when I do peppers, I push in the center, that little core, and I gently pry it apart. Got to be kind of slow and careful so that it doesn't go flying out. And your seeds will mostly, just a second, be attached to that. And then just only a few seeds in the middle. And you just kind of pull out the membrane, and there you go. And I'll do another one. You got to push in the push in the stem. I was thinking about this the other day. You could, from here, cut off the top, and uh, and make your stuffed bell peppers too. So let's pull this out, and no seeds. One more. Push it in. I just pull apart real slow because I just don't want it all to go flying. And pull out the little excess of the membrane, that little white vein, membrane, whatever you call it. And then pull that off. And then there you go. There you go. All right. Let me get these washed and we'll cut those up. So these are going to be for things like salad, eggs, um, I don't know, just whatever I want to use them for. And um, I think I'm going to make these a little on the smaller side. I did some earlier in another video, and those I made kind of bigger. But I feel like these I want to make smaller. So almost as if I used my... that chopper not the electric chopper but the but the one I use the hickamot with so I'm just gonna do them a little thinner and I'll be back I'm gonna finish cutting these up and I'll show you when we're done okay so now I got my peppers done they all look so pretty they'll be ready for the week and <clears throat> you know if you want you don't have to make up your salads like I'm about to do you can just cut up all your vegetables to make it easier on yourself to make your stuff the night beforehand. But the next step is what I do, so that way it's just a little faster for me every night. So I'm going to put these in the refrigerator and we'll get started on our salads. Okay, usually I use two bags of cabbage to make um, eight salads. However, I, um, I have some... Um, Two of my things are dirty, so I'm going to be dividing this into three, and um, I'm doing it the lazy way. If I just dump the whole thing in, then I can zero one out, put it on grams, and then I can just make sure they all weigh about the same. 185, oh my, definitely not. Okay, 140. 168, what are you? 180. And they ain't got to be perfect. So 159, 161, and 167. So it's around 160 grams of cabbage. Um, I don't normally focus on doing three at a time, but I have these onions here, and these onions are like gonna go bad. So since that was the oldest bag of, of cabbage I had, I want to use my oldest onions as well. So whatever this is, I'm going to divide this up between the three amounts. So let's see. 62. 55. 
I usually do about 60 grams of, of onions. And then you get Yeah. So I have 60 grams of onions. I want to keep these two on the very tippy top. So I'm trying to I'm trying to differentiate between them, y'all. And then this one here. Then we're gonna do our rutabaga, and we do about 60 grams of rutabaga. So okay. the cool thing about rutabaga is once it's cut, mine usually lasts about two weeks. So I will be able, I don't, I I will not need to buy more rutabaga next weekend. Um, I'll be able to just use the leftover rutabaga from this. And by the way, I know I had that really big rutabaga. Well, what I ended up doing was I used some of it, I pulled some of it out, and um, um, I'm going to do something else with it. So that's, this, that is not all of the rutabaga um, that we had a while ago. So now we're going to do my other salad. Give me just a second. I gotta, I gotta clean this up. It's bugging me. Okay, now I'll do the same thing with these three. I'm just going to divide it up between them, and then I'll, I'll get them figured out after I get them divided. So we know based on the other side, it'll be around 160 a piece. So, oh shoot, I don't have anything else to zero. I don't have any other clean ones. Well, I'll just make sure they're about the same. I don't remember how much this thing weighs. Oh, oh, there we go. 280. Okay, so these are about the same. So, I, since I didn't zero out the containers, I know these are about 160 of uh, cabbage. So now let's go on and do our onions. And that one had 55 onions, so let's see. Well, they're all a little bit short on onions, but that's okay, because I add pickled onions anyway. So, all right, so now we're going to get our rutabaga. And like I said, I don't put, I don't put peppers on my salads when I make them either, because peppers are another thing that kind of goes a little bad sometimes early, and so does tomatoes. So I will not put tomatoes um, on my salads when I make them. I wait until the night before, before adding my tomatoes. It's just how my brain works. All right, so there we go. <clears throat> that is my salads. And these are going to be ready for the week. And uh, let's go on and get our paper towel on them. I take a paper towel and I fold it and I fold it to fit just nice and neat <clears throat> and I put my lid on it and these will store upside down in the refrigerator I'm gonna do my the ones that have the, the good onions first and then that way I'll have them on the bottom of my stack um, these, I've had these last 14, I think it was 13, 14 days. So as long as you put your pepper towel on here, it will definitely extend the life of your vegetables. I haven't tried it with fruit before, but I know for a fact that it does it with my veggies. And people ask, why do I use cabbage? Cabbage for me, hang on, let me see which one has the best. Okay, so this one. Um, cabbage for me, I, it keeps that crunch. And even after 13 days, it's still crunchy. And so um, I just like that crunch that you get whenever you, you know, whenever you use cabbage. So that's just, and I like the taste of it too. So, but for a lot of people really prefer the lettuce. So don't, don't just do cabbage because I do. I just, you know, because I'm making so much stuff 
so far in advance, I really have to do what works better for me. But if you don't make stuff this far in advance, you enjoy your lettuce. My mama likes spinach. So I used to do spinach, but this just lasts longer. So there we go. That is our six salads. Ta-da! There's our six salads all ready to go. Last thing, this rutabaga, I also will put a paper towel in it and put this lid on and store it upside down. By the way, you notice I did not season my salads because um, I season them um, the night before I eat them because that's just kind of fun of making up my salads is figuring out what all I'm going to put on them. So, all right, that's all.